Here's the thing with caterpillars of Anterea moths. Once you have bred one species of them, you've seen them all. Because Anterea is a huge, huge genus with over 100 species in it. But despite that, most of their caterpillars look the same. Sure, some of them may have metallic patches in silver or pink, which is pretty. But most of them will be the same generic green larvae. That doesn't mean that breeding them is not worth it. Because there are some rarities out there in this world, including the species that I'm filming today. This is the caterpillar of the rare Anterea godmani, the Central American representative of Anterea. On the American continent, four species of Anterea can be found, of which two are in North America. Uh, these include the commonly known Polyphemus moth, Anterea polyphemus. Then you have a little bit more south and in the mountains, the Anterea oculea. The oculea is found in warmer climates and has four eye spots, including two on the forewings and two on the hind wings. And it's distinguished from the Polyphemus moth this way. In Central America, there's also two species of Anterea. In Mexico, in Central America, you'll find the Anterea Montezuma. And there's also the Anterea Godmani. Now, today I am breeding the Godmani. I'm holding here on a stick um, what I believe to be um, a fourth instar caterpillar that's about to shed its skin to the final and fifth instar. So far breeding these has been actually somewhat straightforward. Although I suffered some losses in the very first instar when the caterpillars just hatched from their eggs. But any of the caterpillars that survived beyond the second uh, larval stage were perfectly fine and so far the rearing has been relatively easy in fact. It's somewhat of a rarity, not because it's that rare to find in the wild, but they fly somewhat in highlands in places like I believe Costa Rica, uh, well, other parts of Central America. I'm not sure if it's also found in South America. I mean, it may be not very deep to the, into the Amazon, but like maybe the part that connects to uh, Central America. Anyways, I don't know, so I'm not going to speculate about this. But some of the rarity, because not many species are out there capturing moths in the higher altitudes. But uh, if they are, they have a chance of finding this one. Their natural food plant is oak tree. As you can see, I'm also feeding them oak here in Europe. They will eat several kinds. Basically, they like any type of oak tree. And well, the thing is, you have to keep them well ventilated, not too dry. They like a little bit of humidity, but uh, also don't just keep them soaked or very wet. Just, uh, like this is okay in room temperature. Maybe you can sp spray uh, like once every two weeks. They don't need it very often. It helps. They like to drink. Uh, well, that's it basically. I hope that these will make it to adult moths, spin their cocoons, do their thing and make a beautiful YouTube video. I'm gonna finish the video with some close-ups of the other caterpillars. Thank you for watching again. Like and subscribe. What's interesting is that some of these caterpillars will have a silver patch, but not all of them. So while this is a unique characteristic of the Anterea godmani, it's not that universally present, it seems to be a variable trait. Now, it's hard to find these caterpillars here because they're very well camouflaged. Ah, 
I just found one with a silver spot. So you can see it stands out, it's here on its side. One metallic little patch here, can you see it? Uh, there you go. Maybe bring it some in some more light. Very interesting. So you can see they blend in really well with the environment. There's, their, their color is just that perfect shade of green that you need to blend in with oak leaves. Now, this is one about to go to the final instar. Very beautiful. Very nice. Well, thanks for watching.